Hello and welcome to another Small Gold live stream. Tonight is Saturday night, the 12th of January, 2019, and it is Saturday Night Silver with Small Gold. Tonight we're going to be taking a look at the annual silver numbers, silver mintage numbers from the United States Mint and the Perth Mint. The Perth Mint numbers are finally in. The U.S. Mint numbers were in long ago as they stopped production in early December. But uh, we're going to take a look at both the U.S. Mint, the Perth Mint numbers. We're also going to take a look at a poll that we took of the small gold game changers and see which they prefer, whether they prefer the Perth Mint silver product or the U.S. Mint silver product. First, let's just take a quick look at the cryptos and we'll get right into Saturday night silver with small gold. Uh, not much movement today. Bitcoin 3619, essentially unchanged, down a quarter of a percent. Bitcoin Cash at 133, up 3%. Ethereum at 124.32, that is down 0.8%. And Litecoin is up 1.17% at $32. And the gold and silver markets are closed. All right, let's take a look at what happened last year. And we're going to do a little bit of a historic dive back into the mintages of recent years of the Perth Mint and the U.S. Mint. Before we start, remember that the United States Mint, two very important points, is a much larger mint and has historically been a much larger mint than the Perth Mint. The U.S. Mint services a much larger population and also has had, since 1986, a much larger mintage of both gold and silver bullion. Also keep in mind that the Perth Mint has been primarily focused more on gold until 2015 when it issued a silver bullion coin. Prior to that, it was issuing limited mintage style coins, silver coins, kookaburras, lunar uh, year, and koala bear coins. The other thing, the differences between the two mints, as we mentioned, the Perth Mint will issue a series of coins in silver, the bullion coin, the kangaroo, the kookaburra, the koala, and then the lunar series. Whereas the U.S. Mint has kept to one coin, one one ounce bullion coin, and that being the American Silver Eagle. Same design since 1986 all the way through to now. The only time they changed that design, and they didn't even change the design, they just wrote something on the rim on the reeded edge. In, 19, in 2016 was 30th anniversary. U.S. Mint also makes 5-ounce America the Beautiful coins. Uh, those are relatively limited uh, issuance. And the Perth Mint not only makes a 1-ounce coin, but also makes 1-kilogram um, coins, 10-ounce coins, and 2-ounce coins in addition to the 1-ounce coins. Now, they do make those coins in unlimited mintages, but generally they don't sell more than a few thousand a year. And the bulk of the ounces and coins sold is in the one ounce size, of which they have put limits on each of the Kookaburra, the Lunar Series, and the Australian Koala. Those all have between 300 and 500,000 a year limits. So that does limit the silver mintages coming out of uh, Perth Mint. However, as we'll see, and you're looking at in September 2015, that big spike there, that is when the Perth Mint released the silver, uh, Australian silver kangaroo, which was designed to be a competitor of the American silver eagle coin. The American silver eagle coin is minted in amounts, according to the U.S. Treasury, such to meet public demand, in his opinion, which gives them some leeway not just to print as many as they're needed to meet public demand. And the Australian Silver Kangaroo released in September 2015 was also designed to meet public demand. And the reason they had that big spike was, first of all, it was their first month coming out with the coin, but it is when the Canadian Mint and the U.S. Mint were having trouble meeting record demand in 2015 with the Silver Canadian Maple Leaf and the American Silver Eagle that year. The Perth Mint is also a maker of 
silver planchets. So they can, subject to the amount of silver they have on hand, and since they mine silver in and gold in Australia and near the Perth Mint, and they also refine it, it's not too hard for them to have ramped up pretty quickly. The problem with the U.S. Mint that year was the United States Mint does not keep on hand silver blanks or planchets. It buys them from three private companies, one of them being the Sunshine Minting Company, and they got caught flat-footed, and the United States Mint, there's nothing they can do because they don't make the silver planchets. It's strange. I don't know why they don't do it, but they source that out to third parties. Maybe gives them an excuse not to make uh, that many. They can always blame the third party. But the Perth Mint stepped up that year, and in addition to selling its koalas, its kookaburras, and its lunar series silver coins, also was able to pro produce these unlimited in mintage Australian silver kangaroos. So that's what you're seeing there. And you can see since they've added that coin, you could, it's almost a bifurcation. You could see the dividing line. They never really sold a million ounces before this because they were essentially limited to 300,000 probably during that time period each of the lunar series the kookaburra and the koala and that takes you to 900,000 in a good year if you don't sell them all then you're going to sell less but it looks like now when you add in all the coins they routinely now do more than a million ounces but let's go over a, a million ounces per month and but let's look at the U.S. Mint and just take a look now, the U.S. Mint, to do a million ounces a month, even in a horrible year like 2018, it's not that hard. They sold 15 million ounces last year, which is an average of over a million ounces per month. But look at the big spike there in 2015, and really the stair step from 2013, 14, and 15. 42.67 million, 44 million, and 47 million. Those are very, very big years for the U.S. Mint selling silver. But go back before the financial crisis, and they would struggle, too, to sell a million ounces. Only in 2002, prior to the financial crisis, did the U.S. Mint average more than... Now, even then, they didn't average a million coins a month because they only sold 10 million, and there's 12 months in a year. So both the Perth Mint and the U.S. Mint were not big silver sellers. This is the point I like to make. Silver as an investment metal really has taken off since the financial crisis <clears throat> and in some respects it's coming down to levels that existed before the financial crisis as you can see but the big period of financial crisis post financial crisis we saw some very big investment silver at the u.s mint all right now let's take a look at the comparison between the perth mint and the U.S. Mint. The first thing we want to look at is we've seen the annual numbers of the U.S. Mint just now. Now we're going to take a look just at the last four years of silver mint sales. And that basically takes all those months that you saw and I've packed them together here. You can see before 2015 the 7.5 million sales uh, ounces of silver sold at the Perth Mint. And that is, reflects an entire year without the silver Australian kangaroo bullion coin. Then when they introduced the silver Australian bullion coin, they sold essentially from the end of September, they added uh, they added um, 3.6 million. So they sold almost a third of their annual 2015 production in that one month alone. And that was the first time they would gotten above 10 million ounces. The next year, 2016, with a full year's worth of sales, they got to 12.2 million. 2017, they fell off a bit. 2018, back to 9.2 million. But if you compare that to the U.S. Mint again, you can see the U.S. Mint fall off in sales is much more dramatic, although, it's, of course, it's falling from a much higher point. But you can see there... The U.S. Mint there way, way up. And the decline from $47 million to last year's $15 million, that is a huge decline. That is a loss of $32 million in sales. 
that is the equivalent of the t entire 2012 mintage. Uh, 2010 mintage was higher, but you can see we're down now back to 2007 levels at the U.S. Mint. But the Australian Mint, ever since they've introduced that coin, the Australian Silver Kangaroo, we're still at levels since then, even in 2017 and 18 with declining sales, ahead of 2014 before they introduced that coin. But because of declining sales at the U.S. Mint, there's been months now where the Australian Mint will actually outsell the U.S. Mint, and it's quite interesting. Let's take a look at first at the Perth Mint uh, U.S. Let's just look at the Perth Mint silver sales versus the U.S. Mint in 2017. 2017 was one of the few, the few times other than that um, big month in September of 2015 that the Perth Mint actually outsold the U.S. Mint in a given month. Prior to that, the U.S. Mint was selling 36, 40, 45, 47 million ounces. Perth Mint didn't have a chance. But when sales declined in 2017 for a full year, for the first time in June 2017, other than the big month in 2015, the Perth Mint started to outsell the U.S. Mint, not on a consistent basis, but if you look, they outsold the U.S. Mint in June, September, November, and December. And this is from a much smaller mint, and it really highlights not so much that the Perth Mint was going gangbusters, but that the U.S. Mint you can see some of those small blue lines. Um, really, sales just slowing down to a crawl. Now, I've also done a comparison of this past year. I'm going to take a look at that. Here is uh, 2018. Same thing. Although this year, at the end of the year, the U.S. Mint really picked up. And the U.S. Mint towards the end of the year, had some very decent months, months that they haven't seen in a couple of years. And then, of course, they blew the end of the year sell-through because they only sold a few thousand at the end of the year. They closed up early, and that allowed the Perth Mint, you could see, with the 692,000. Very strong at the end of the year for the Perth Mint, very weak at the end of the year for the U.S. Mint. Now, what did that do for uh, comparison purposes? Well, the U.S. Mint still outsold the Perth Mint in 2018. The U.S. Mint sold 15,210,000, and the Perth Mint sold 9.243 million. So the U.S. Mint still holding on to its dominance in silver sales, but the Perth Mint is moving up at a better rate or not losing as much as the U.S. Mint has been the last few years. What other charts we got for you here? All these charts will be on the Small Gold website tomorrow. You can check them out, copy them. Anything that has a Small Gold on it, you're free to use it. Okay, so here's 2017 and 18 uh, put together. Um, and you can see here, these are the American Silver Eagle sales. This is not versus the Perth Mint. This is where you can see the decline from 17 to 18. But you can see in 2018 in the red how the U.S. Mint came back in August, September, October, and November. And then only sold 150000 in December. So 2017 was strong at the beginning of the year. Weak at the end of the year for the U.S. Mint. And then weak at the beginning of the year, 2018. Look at that May number in the middle in red. And then we finished strong in 2018, except for December. And the current numbers, I'm just looking at them for the U.S. Mint. So far, the U.S. Mint is selling, probably will have a better January. We looked at this last night, better January than last year. It's probably right now at about that 2.846 million. <clears throat> All right. What else do we got for charts for you? I'm going to get to your comments. We've seen that one, we've seen that one. Now, the other thing is, I was talking about what the U.S. Mint does, um, being a large 
silver and gold mint and started out selling more gold than silver. But then you saw that big spike in silver sales post-financial crisis. <clears throat> this chart shows the U.S. Mint Silver Eagle to one ounce gold eagle sales. And you can see if you go to the far left of the chart, the U.S. Mint, the, the buyers at the U.S. Mint were really interested in those gold coins. And why not? They were $200, $300, $400. They weren't that expensive. Gold is good looking. And you can see silver was not an attractive thing. They almost sold. In 1998, they only sold 2.8 times more silver eagles, one ounce silver eagles, than they did gold eagles. And in dollar terms, that's fanatical because it means they basically sold hardly any dollars worth of silver. And a lot of that had to do with the financial crisis in 1998 and 1999. That's when people were buying gold, not silver, as you can see by the ratio. But in 2000, they sold precious little of precious metals at all. They sold very little silver and very little gold. And that's where the ratio went up. But then it went back down when sales resumed to relatively normal levels. But then you can see in 2011, 12, 13, 14, 15, and so on, 16, the U.S. Mint really started to sell not just large amounts, like 100 more American Silver Eagles than one ounce American Gold Eagles. Look at that. That's a big increase from 2.8 in 1998. But also it was almost the same amount of dollars worth because 100 times, remember the gold-silver ratio is at the time was only 70 to 1. And if you sold 100 times more, you actually sold more dollar value of gold, I mean of silver than you did of, of gold. And that was a period of time even I was concerned that the investment silver demand kept up it was going to really eat into is becoming like a quarter of the of 25 percent of the overall annual silver demand well you've seen that's get slashed by 50 60 70 percent that's not as much of an issue anymore let's compare the ratios here they're still very tough i mean they're still in the 70s right now the amount of silver the u.s mint sells to gold and compare that to the amount of silver the Perthman sells compared to gold, even with this new um, kookaburra, no, the new kangaroo that they'll sell in unlimited amounts. Well, let's take a look. It's about in the 20s as opposed to the 70s. So the Perthman is far more skewed towards gold, even with the new silver bullion, silver Australian kangaroo coin. So you could see here it's pretty consistent. Now, it's gone up into the 20s only because of that coin, the kangaroo. Before that, they were generally selling 10 to 15 to 1, which was somewhat in line with the sales at the U.S. Mint before the big financial crisis and big spike in silver. This silver investment demand thing is somewhat of a craze. It's about as old as Bitcoin, if you think about it. It came out in 2009. People bought massive amounts of silver from 2009 to about... 2016 and we don't know if we'll see those numbers again so it's I, i'm not sure if they tell you the history of silver sales but they weren't that strong before 2009 and that coincides when a lot of silver channels came online on youtube so give them credit for creating demand for silver during that time period still trying to create that demand but hasn't been as successful recently so there you are that's the purse mint and you can see the Gold, the silver to gold sales ratio went up when they, when there was more interest in gold in 2015, and also when they introduced a coin that would allow people to buy beyond just the numismatic 300,000, 500,000 worth of coins. So they sell about a million of those coins a month, a little less generally of those Australian uh, kangaroos. Let's take a look at dollar amounts. So this one's from Nick Laird. You can't copy this one. This one shows how much in dollar value the Perth Mint sells in gold versus silver and you can see they've never outsold dollar amount in silver to gold the closest they came was at some point in uh, looks like 2015 and looks like September 2015 when they first introduced the silver Australian kangaroo they sold 3.6 million of them even then even with those massive silver sales they did not outsell in dollar value and you can see now last month 
was basically 53 million to 15 million. These are Australian dollars, but it's the same ratio. So clearly the Perth Mint far more of a gold shop than a silver shop. The U.S. Mint has flipped probably from being a gold shop to a silver shop and maybe back to a gold shop, but I don't think quite yet. Let's see, are there any other charts here to show you? No, what I'd like to do now is show you the results of the poll. Let me just show you what we had before I came online. If I didn't get any, um, let's see if there's any additional comments, I mean additional uh, votes that came in. It's a pretty surprising poll result there that a lot of people trash the U.S. coinage. They trash it on the fact that it's just the Silver Eagle. But a lot of people, while they may like the Australian coins, the Perth Mint coins, they don't like, they like the design, but they don't like the fact that no matter what you buy, and I have 29 votes, no matter what you buy, you end up with um, the Queen. So you basically get robbed out of a, a fresh design because they got to slap the Queen on the front and then you're dealing with the... Uh, dealing with the um, the other side for your your fantastic design so where we are now let me give you the update on the poll we did three more votes come in at this point the question was do you prefer US mint silver products meaning the American silver eagle or the American the beautiful silver coins or do you prefer the purse mint silver products like the kangaroos the koalas kookaburras and then of course the lunars which I didn't include but you know that those are also another offering and the latest three votes looks like all came in in favor of the U.S. Mint. So pretty surprising there, although I, I would say I, I don't like to have the queen on the other side of the coins. I like to see two fresh designs when they come out with a new coin. Um, I also I like the, the pandas in China, but they do the same thing. I like the fact that they change the panda every year. It's very cute. They make a different design. But on the back, they always have the People's the Temple of China, whatever they have. And it's a nice design, but it's always the same. I like when you get two fresh designs. Same problem with the America the Beautiful coin. You get a new, really big canvas to put some type of state waterfall or bird on. And then on the back, you just have the bland Washington Quarter thing. All right, let's see if there's anything else. Otherwise, I'm going to start pitching mugs and donations and all that kind of stuff. There they are. Here comes the... The barcodes, the QR codes for the Bitcoin and Litecoin donations. Just hold your phone up there and unload your wallet into those wallets. Or you can support Small Gold by check. You can send a check directly to the P.O. Box. Becoming a patron, I, I did manage to get a very, very happy last night. I got another patron. We're back at the 20 mark. We now have 20 Small Gold game changing patrons. Patrons can email me, ask me questions, ask for charts, and many do. Or you can send a one-time donation to PayPal. And don't forget, you can always order your Small Gold mugs, the Small Gold Classic and Super Classic mugs. They look a little pricey, but they're really not because they come with free shipping anywhere in the continental USA, which is anywhere between 7 and $9, and it comes in two-day priority shipping. So it's the same price as any of the other mugs you may see out there. But these are better-looking mugs. These are Small Gold game-changing mugs. So let's see what you guys are thinking on this fine Saturday evening. All right, let's see what you guys are saying. Roger Henley was here earlier. I don't know if he's here now. Let's just see if Roger... Oh, yeah, he's here. The koala is not a bear. That is correct. But they call them koala bears in America. And, of course, the kangaroo is not really a kangaroo. He's a robot. If you haven't seen Roger's uh, video on small gold hyper classic mugs better check that one out and you can learn all about the Rubot and the illuminati but americans like to call them koala bears and kangaroos mk hearns is here mike is his name i like your discussions he says well thank you mike and pablo pina probably gets the award for being the most consistent regular here he says good day max strong also a regular he says greetings Prashanti girl asks if she is late. No, you are not late at all. Nope, 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 nope. All right. Anne is keeping an eye on Bitcoin, saying it's holding for now. 
the general sentiment on Bitcoin is it's going down, it's going down, tone V is going to 1,000. I laugh at these predictions. They have no idea what they're talking about. I remember tone V was, I, I forgot if it was going to go to a million or uh, the other guy, Pompeliano, he was saying it's going to go to 50,000 by the end of 2018. Then he's saying, oh, it's going to go below 3,000. If it's going up, it's going up. If it's going down, they predict it's going down. I'm not sure I could trust anyone's. I, as you know, I think almost all these predictions, whether they're in Bitcoin, Litecoin, gold, silver, the stock market, inevitably predictions. They're almost you can. I think a, a coin toss is better than a lot of these predictions that people make. Yeah, chartist higher highs, lower lows, head and shoulder, neck headline. There you go. All right, I'm not going to do any predictions. Max Strong, I've got 21 ounce 2018 Kookaburra is a gorgeous coin. You know, people prefer, I should have done a poll, they prefer the Kookaburra to the the Koala Bear. I'm surprised, but uh, maybe I'm not. I like the Panda Bear too. Um, let's see, you guys are chatting here. Let's see. Well, big Litecoin discussion here. Coinbase Pro. Hey, for Denmark here, how many order have you in your pocket? A-U-A-G-9-9-9. I don't know how Danish people... I've been to Denmark, but I remember speaking Swedish there instead of uh, Taksimiket and all that stuff. Hello, Denmark. How are the Yellow Vest doing? But it's very similar. I, I do know that the Danish language is similar. Copenhagen, again. All right. The banks probably will double the cash with the news. All right. Let's see. ASMR people. I wonder if the Perth Mint is gaining on the U.S. Mint based on the weakness of the Australian currency. You mean that would increase their sales there? Actually, that cuts both ways. Um, I know in India, when the rupal, rupee gets weak, the time to buy your precious metals when you have a currency that fluctuates is actually when the currency is strong because when it's weak, you don't have as much, you don't get your buying power, so you're paying more. I don't think that's what it is. I think a lot of the Perthman sales, anyway, are foreign sales that I don't think they come from Australians because they certainly wouldn't be able to outsell or outbuy the United States. I think a lot of the tourists come in and they buy stuff. I think they ship a lot out to China, too. All right, let's see. The banks already ban withdrawals. Hmm. Oh, yeah, and um, you're talking about this yellow vest thing in France. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Egypt banned the purchase of yellow vests. That's funny. Arab Spring with the yellow vests. Should we all wear yellow vests to support them here in the U.S.? Asked Philip Quinn. Australian gold is 1786, way down from the high. Hey, I also heard in India... They're shutting off people who do, like if you have a bank account and they find out you're doing crypto transactions, they close your bank account, which is pretty stupid because in India, a lot of people don't have bank accounts to begin with. And now you're basically saying, we're going to cut your bank account off. You're going to force them into a gold, silver, and crypto market as a medium of exchange. I mean, I, I when they when they took the cash and they demonetized it, I said to myself, I lived, I'd never trust the bank again. You got to wait in line to get the new notes, and they told you it's all about corruption. They talk about inconveniencing hundreds of millions of people to find a little corruption, and then you just because you made a crypto transaction, you're not allowed to bank anymore. That came out yesterday. I was very surprised to see it, but uh, see, that's the thing that people don't realize. Again, this isn't a pitch for the cryptocurrencies, not to buy them or, or to say they're going higher. But if you want to send somebody some value, you can send it via Bit. You can try it right now. I remember the time I was I was giving this little spiel. Johnny Litecoin, who's the Johnny Appleseed of Litecoin, running around trying to get merchants to sign up, and he's being successful and getting ATM, Bitcoin ATM, Litecoin ATMs into stores. I was giving this spiel, and he sent me. Uh, some Litecoin, so I sent them a mug. But um, and the thing is with these patron, where they're kicking people off patron or kicking people off PayPal or Mastercard, or they're shutting your bank account down. 
there is no Bitcoin company to shut you down. There is no Litecoin to shut you down. Right now, anyone who's listening or has access to a computer or a smartphone can download a Bitcoin or a Litecoin wallet onto their phone. Loaf wallet is the Litecoin one. And you get an address and you get a wallet. And you can create a, a wallet and you can receive your Bitcoin or Litecoin and you can send it as well. And that's not the same as if I was booted off Patreon, you couldn't send me anything. If I was ba pitched off of PayPal, you couldn't send me anything. Um, you're restricted. Or if my bank account was closed, you could send me a check. I couldn't cash it there. But the Bitcoin and Litecoin, you can uh, send. That, that, to me, that's what they call censorship-resistant money. I think that's a very powerful thing. That is what finally... I'm, I've never liked the Bitcoin and Litecoin... I like the idea of hard money. I don't like the idea of relying on all this technology. But I like the idea less of having Prime Minister Modi going on TV and saying, hey, guess what? Anyone who's got rupees in your pocket or in your wallets, somewhere in your drawers, that money is not going to be any good by Sunday night. That is, you know, I'd rather take the risk of the currency collapsing on Bitcoin or Litecoin than the guy just strolling on the TV on a Friday night and telling you that money doesn't work. And then we don't have enough bills to give you when you get there to exchange them. So why don't you open a bank account here? And then if they find out you're dealing in cryptocurrencies, they're going to close the bank. Uh-uh. That's not good. All right. ASMR people and 99 people are getting ready for Y2K. That's right. And that's why the gold sales were through the roof. I don't have... I do have those. You can go on the small gold site and you can see them if you look up the uh i just published yeah if you go to small gold right now you can see it you can see the chart that shows the historics where i think they sold a couple of million ounces of silver that year a gold that year people preparing for y2k yes indeed that's what it was but they weren't preparing with silver that's the point why it was only it was 2.8 to 1 the year before of y2k in 1999 is a canadian dollar up against u.s dollar no 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 Canadian dollars down. All right. AUAG from Denmark. In Europe, we have to pay VAT for new silver coins, right? And gold is tax free in the EU, but VAT can be anything between 9 and 25%. Yeah, that does keep up some of the, um, the investment demand away from silver in Europe. And in the US, the low prices put investment demand in front of people. Lunar series will keep value over time. Yeah, because they only make three hundred to five hundred thousand. I think the new limit now. Let me just check here. Coin mintages from the Perthman Bullion .com. Australian Kookaburra this year will be five hundred thousand maximum mintage. The Australian Lunar series one ounce will be three hundred thousand. If you had any money, the ten K says two hundred maximum mintage. Very interesting. All right. See, Philip Quinn. I hope some of the yellow vest people who are trying to get their money from the banks on some yellow metal. Yeah, the problem with the yellow metal and the silver is trying to get people to accept it to buy stuff. I, I think you saw the other day six tobacco stop. We, we covered this last night. Six tobacco shops now in France will sell you Bitcoin, and by February that number rises to sixty six hundred. So that it becomes almost initial immediately a medium of exchange in France. Let's see. Yes, I've seen some vest on YouTube written by Bitcoin. I was thinking to say buy silver. You know, look, we, we've talked about this before. For a medium of exchange to work, it not only has to be convenient, which silver is, it, it's pocket change, you can use it. But other people, there has to be a network of people that are using it, either through legal tender laws or because let's say all the yellow vests, everyone decides yellow vests are going to convert their, they're not even francs anymore, their euros, into alternative currencies. They're going to use their own currency, you know, yellow vest coin, or they're going to use silver coins, or they're going to use Bitcoin or Litecoin, and 1.7 million of them they're going to trade that way well then it works then silver works because you see somebody in the yellow vest you know he's going to take bitcoin you know he's going to take silver coins for whatever he might be selling or whatever service he might provide and that's how a silver or something could become a currency 
is if there's an identifiable group of people willing to use it. So it's an interesting point, Pablo. Okay. All right. Let's see. Well, there's a lot here. All right. AUAG99 says invest in mugs. That's right. I pitched the mugs tonight, and I pitched them hard. I pitched for patrons last night, and I got one. I was very pleased. Very nice new small gold patron on Patreon. Um, yeah, Tom was saying it would go to 50,000, 60,000. And I saw this stuff when it was like 16,000. He said it would go to 12 and then go high. They, as it's going down, it's going down. And as it's going up, it's going up. Nonsense, these predictions. But people believe them. You guys, you Australians, talking about the Rue box. Now, you need to do a follow-up on the Kuka box. Their Illuminati surveillance drone in collusion with the Rue box. Truth. Send me money for providing you with the truth. Truth you can't find anywhere else on the internet. And send me money before they shut my channel down. That always works. Send me money before my channel gets shut down. Or you won't get this unique information and these unique predictions that you can't find anywhere else no one can tell you that silver is set to skyrocket like i can no one can tell you game over and game changer like i can that must be worth a lot of money right so drop what you're doing and send money all right you people on down under stick together that was really funny wasn't it and that that video that roger and he made about the small gold hyper classic mugs read counterfeit plastic small gold mugs and he was feeding a kangaroo out of them and he had the roo box and everything bonus b music never saw you here before welcome compared to other metals as platinum a good buy right now Pfft, who knows i mean the one thing if you just going on relative rarity like silver is rarer than gold you know that whole because something comes out of the ground at a lower rate or a rate that's unsustainable well platinum comes out of the ground 10 times at a rate 10 times less than gold and it's trading you know gold is worth one and a half times more than platinum on that basis the answer is yes on reality basis the answer is no so who knows why these things go up or down all right vive la france says anne holloman all right. R Pablo, Roger, was that you that punched the kangaroo for headlocking your dog? I didn't see that. I didn't see any of that. Uh, let's look at Roger. He's he's pitching his own small gold hyper classic mugs now. So do you fancy purchasing a small gold hyper classic mug for me? <laughs> oh, this is a story that Pablo was telling. Heard that about India. Okay. Haha, ha, Roger, I'm in the U.S. Otherwise, I would. Unbelievable. People willing to buy cheap knockoffs from an Australian. All right. I would be considered a conspiratorial person. <laughs> it's a nice-looking mug. I mean, as he says, it looks like it might have come out of a 3D printer there. This, you know, let me find... i got to find that mug. Let's see if we can find Roger's... Uh, let's see. The super classic. Hyper classic mug is what it is. I don't even remember when it was done. It's going to take me a while. It might be worth the wait. Because the hyper classic mug is. I think it's a kind of cheesy. I think it just shows resourcefulness. That someone can, uh, you know, either they can't afford or they can't wait to have a mug sent to Australia. So what they do is they make their own. It's kind of like the Grinch making her his own reindeer by taking his dog. It's kind of cruel. But let's see if you guys agree with me and look at the hyper classic mug one more time. And also check out on Roger's channel. Roger does a lot of stuff on his YouTube channel. Debunking the debunking of the debunkers and the truth channels. Very good stuff there on Roger's channel. Still not a big fan of the mug yet. Of course, he hasn't sent me one. Um, I guess it's too expensive to send. Just as it's too expensive to send a small gold classic or super classic mug to Australia. I'm not finding it. I've seen a lot of great pictures. There goes Lucky again. 
And there is, uh, you know, I probably don't keep the hyper classic mug with, oh, there it is, with all the other mugs. The best thing about, there's the hyper classic mug. You can see he's from Australia because he's got the, um, those silver Australian kangaroos. But the other thing that he showed, which I think is a great graphic, is this. Trying to imply that small gold classic and super classic mugs are 5,000 year old technology, like horses or transportation, period. And then saying that the new small gold hyper classic mug is like the car or a Lambo or a Ferrari, whatever that fine looking automobile happens to be. But uh, if you like your hyper classic mugs, head on over to Roger Henley's YouTube channel. Check them out. I prefer to stick with these. All right. Let's see. What else do we got? Uh, what else? What else? What else? Palladium is good. It's rare. Yeah, it is. But palladium has always been rare. Why did it go up? You know, that's the thing. It, it's been rare. It hasn't, it hasn't gotten really much rarer. But uh, it caught a bid. That's for sure. A-U-A-G. Sky's the limit when measured in fractional reserve currency. Well, that's true. Scott Wardell, quality knockoff video. Never knew about the ruse. See, they're keeping that stuff from us. What else are they hiding from us? You know, they just learned from Roger about the Rubot. Hyper classic, hyper super classic mug. No, that's a hyper classic mug he made. The hyper super classic mug, he'd have to, he'd have to get red and draw it on the inside of the, of the mug itself. AUAG. Imagine a sterling 0.925 small gold mug, almost pure silver. I would love to have a sterling silver mug. It would cost well over a hundred dollars, though, and uh, to have it made, really nice to make one. But uh, I'm not sure that comparison was accurate. They didn't make plastic. Oh yeah, well it definitely is accurate. But he was saying that ceramics are old technology. That's definitely true. Um, but. Just because it's new doesn't mean it's uh, higher quality. Is that a stainless thermal small gold mug? Yes. Yes, that is indeed. That is a travel mug. Now, the travel mug, I don't know if you've seen the mug shots that we have. I've done one for every mug that we have in mug shots. The classic and super classic shipped from small gold headquarters. I ship them personally with a, with a signed note. All the other mugs come from the small gold store. And we even have small gold glass. We even have dog mugs. Um, but here's here's the small gold travel mug in a mug shot. Get it? See? Up against a lineup there. But um, we also have a small espresso mug. They call it an espresso mug. It looks more like a little mini, I guess you call it a demi-tasse mug there. And that one's a cool one. I really like this one. This one is the small gold beer stein beer mug 22 ounces packs a punch if you use it as a defensive weapon you can conceal carry that you can open carry that really got some heft to it there's also this one looks really it doesn't really look in the picture it's a frosted mug but if you put this one in the fr freezer with a little water you get double frosting and your carlsberg light would go very well in that auag Danish or Danish beer, but uh, there's also there's all these small gold mug shots, but then there's also the small gold shot glass mug shot. There you go. We have shot glasses. And remember always to live the mug life. Remember mugs available. Just go to smallgold.com. I will ship out the classic or super classic mug. You can pay by Bitcoin or Litecoin. Just shoot me an email at smallgold at gmail.com. We can arrange for that. Or you can go to the Small Gold store. I'll leave you a link. And you can buy the, all the other Small Gold game-changing products. I'll leave you the link for that. Small Gold glass. I'll get you into the store with this link to get the Small Gold beer mug. I'll leave you a link right now. Or just go to smallgold.com. You can find everything really by going to smallgold.com. All right. Silver is rare. Here we go. Silver is for life. Silver is rare and get rare and has not caught up to gold. Yeah. It is cheap. I don't I don't disagree with that.
I just don't agree with the silver derangement syndrome that silver is somehow destined to be one to one or nine to one or I just don't believe that okay ASMR people but as a QR code yes Rogers coin has a QR code I was thinking of putting the QR code on the small gold classic and super classic mugs and then when you get your mug you can always you don't have to wait to get the address you can just turn your mug hold up your phone and send small gold Litecoin or Bitcoin how many mugs can you sell a day ha 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 I think the most I sold in one day was like eight or nine um I think I'd have to check but I think we're over 100 mugs for sure in total sales of mugs which is pretty good because this channel is pretty small um I mean there are some channels that have thousands and hundreds of patrons and and 20 and 50 and 100,000 subscribers I only have 3600 subscribers so we've got a very good mug to subscriber ratio here sell mugs to buy silver and gold good idea yeah the only thing is the first 50 or 60 mugs that I sold I actually lost money on because I didn't buy them in bulk I bought them to order and then I shipped them out priority but now I, I managed to buy recently larger quantities so I get the price down and then I can make two or three dollars per mug but uh, it's certainly not um, making me rich if you open carry that filled with silver it's an assault and legal weapon unless you have good self-defense well people send me all the time showing me they stack their mugs but not only do they stack their mugs they fill their mugs with gold and silver we've got a couple of pictures there let me show you those those are really cool when people it's always good when you have your dog there's a dog right there that's a cutie pie with their mug but the one I want to show you is uh, the one with the silver stacked in there I think it's got some uh, constitutional silver here, here it is this is a good looking one here look at this one here your channel is a breath of fresh air coming from a dollar collapse victim and he's got looks like barber silver dimes he's got walking liberty halves and that looks like full it doesn't look like he's stacked the bottom of it to get to that point so he's got a lot of silver in there it's show and tell now and also there's one with gold in it well, by the way if you're a prepper nothing works better than small gold mugs with mountain house you could put mountain house in your mugs you can trade the mugs you can put whatever you want in the mugs small gold mugs but I want to see the one with the gold in it that one was really cool small gold mug with gold there were some decent pieces in there too I can find it oh well, here's Rob Gibbs he just puts your good old coffee in there with his game changer shock the world that's a coffee back mug he says but where is some silver Eh, let's take a look at Lucky. There's Pablo's dog. He's got his small gold mug. I'm not sure if he's guarding the mug or he's just uh, not hardly. He's definitely pointing towards it. That is a cool dog. That is a Doberman. And where's the? Got to find the gold. Well, here's another one. Person might have been a little tipsy when I took that one. Didn't come up straight. Game changing mugs. I'm gonna yell and scream when I find this gold mug. I should label these things better so I can do a word search. I like this. Proving that you can actually put beer in these mugs. Really cool. But gold is what we're looking for. Uh huh. Uh huh. Maybe I made it up. got to be in here there it is you could put gold in a mug well first of all you can stack mugs there you go that's the reason number 11 to buy mugs mug stackers unite but uh, I'm gonna lose it again now and you can put gold in a mug there it is now he's got his gold one piece is loose you can see but that is a well-stacked small gold mug. 
game changer. Yes, indeed. Carlsberg is Dane. It's also Lego. Nozzle Vens, Velux. Yep. 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 All right. Let's hope gold silver ratio will go to 30 for a start. Well, it depends on how it gets there. The way you want it to go there is you want gold to rise and then you want silver to rise faster. See, the come out of the ground silver stacker, I, that's propaganda. The coming out of the ground is just stuff that these guys tell you all the time. Relative rarity, how it comes out of the ground does not define price. As I mentioned, gold comes out of the ground 10 times more than platinum. Oh, but it's not. Platinum's not a monetary metal. Silver isn't either. The point is, relative rare. I'll give you another example. Picasso created 10,000 more art products than I did. And yet his artwork is worth more than mine. There's a desirability impact. Relative rarity is not dispositive. And sometimes there's nothing to do with it. As we've seen, when people want to buy jewelry the amount of money they're willing to spend on jewelry is far more on gold than it is on silver investment demand for silver is almost the equivalent as industrial demand is for gold silver is used as a commodity and there's a reason it's priced closer to copper and zinc and aluminum and nickel than it is to gold and, and gold and platinum and palladium it's not that rare, and relative rarity doesn't find it. But they repeat this stuff over and over and over again. 9 to 1 should be 9 to 1. Re natural ratio. There's no such thing as a natural market ratio. Just be Those are numbers that when countries wanted to institute a bimetallic standard, they would set the price of silver at 16 to 1. The market rarely has ever, if you look at the charts over the last 150 years, I've shown them on here many a times, it was only 16 to 1 for about 10 minutes in 1980. Then it was 30 to 1 in 2011 for about 38 seconds. And that's it. It's gone higher and higher. There's a reason gold has a monetary base. Central banks have it. It's a tier 1 asset. It is desired for gold, jewelry. That's the biggest demand for it. Silver is considered in many places a throwaway metal, and it was pocket change its entire history as money. It was never the same store of value of gold. Now, I'm not trashing silver. I'm highlighting the reality of why silver has been, for the longest time, lower priced than silver. But the problem is that the silver pumpers keep telling you silver is rarer than gold. It only comes out of the ground at 9 to 1. They are finding more uses for silver every day. They don't tell you the numbers they don't tell you that silver demand for electronics was 310 million ounces in 2010 and only 233 million ounces in 2017, but they are putting silver in yoga pants. How much silver are they putting in yoga pants? A lot of these stories are very, they're based on generalities and statements that are supposed to stand for themselves. Res ipsa loquitur. It comes out of the ground 9 to 1, so therefore it's ridiculous that it trades at 85 to 1. No, it's not. Then it's just as ridiculous that gold should, that platinum should be 10 times more valuable, higher price than gold because it comes out of the ground 10 times less. That is something that they just brainwash with you. They tell you these things and you have to listen to them and say, okay, well, how come then for the last 10 years nothing's happened? Oh, it is manipulated. And when JP, and the other one is the JP Morgan has all that silver. That's another story that's just totally made up. I don't know. I don't see any evidence that JP Morgan has that silver. But again, these stories make you believe it, then you repeat them. And if someone if someone disagrees, they're a shill, they're a disinformation agent. It just comes with these people tell you the same story. They go on each other's channels and say the same thing, and they act like they're shocked that silver is so cheap. The rest of the world isn't shocked. Sorry about that. This is supposed to be fun about the person in. But I, it just irks me that people actually believe that it's a fact that silver is so undervalued. I've been seeing this for 10 years. All right. Let's see. What else have we got here? Love Lucky. Comex is a CME group thing. CME is sleeping with JMP. He's a model dog. Yes, he is. Don't need opposable thumbs. How about my smuggle t-shirts? Yes, we have those in the store, MK Harness. 
Yes, Mike, if you go to the Smuggled store, there are Smuggled t-shirts, Smuggled hats. Yes, indeed. Dollars come out of the printing press faster than gold comes out of the ground. Yes, but you know what's interesting, AUAG? Even then, even so, here, here's another point about relative rarity. It's also usage. What gives the dollar value is not its relative rarity, obviously. It's almost an unlimited supply. The issue with... The reason a dollar has value, and in many instances, silver goes down in value, in fiat value versus the dollar. Now, why is that? Well, it's because no one uses silver as a medium of exchange, which means it's useless in a sense if it's not being used. The dollar has value not because it's limited in supply or it has any intrinsic value. It doesn't. But what it has is other people want it and use it. And that makes people scratch their head. How can you say the dollar is any worth anything? Because you hear on these channels, the dollar is worthless. The dollar is toilet paper. The dollar is days are numbered. The dollar is going to collapse. There is de-dollarization going on. Yeah, but the point is that people use it. And that is what gives it value. Now, maybe they shouldn't. Maybe they're stupid. But that's not the point. The point about a currency is its use actually gives it value. Its convenience gives it value. Lugging around silver coins that no one is going to take at a shop devalues the value it used to have as a currency. Silver doesn't have a monetary value. What do you mean? Silver's been money for 5,000 years. And horses were transportation for 5,000 years. They cease to be used for their purpose for 5,000 years means they no longer have that value. Now, I always say horses are valuable. But not as a means of transportation. That's what they were most valuable for. You got a horse so you can go places. Today you get a horse so you can bet on it or you want to keep it as a pet or you want to drive around in a circle in it. But you're not going to go from New York to Boston on a horse. Just as you're not going to conduct your transactions in gold or silver. That's very hard for people who listen to these channels telling you gold is money period. J.P. Morgan says gold is money and everything else is just credit and yeah, those are nice sayings and you can repeat them to yourself, but then you have to ask yourself the question, as Clint Eastwood would say, why then are these supposedly most valuable things that we could not lead our lives without so cheap? Well, because they're not valued by anyone else other than the people who pump them. They're valued at $15.60 a share. Nah, it's possible it's undervalued. I probably agree with that. This idea that it's got to be 9 to 1 because it comes out of the ground, that's not a rule. That doesn't mean it, It's not like the world doesn't know that. And they think they better rush to the metals. That's another one. Everyone's going to rush to the metals. Yeah, and China's going to crush the dollar. Ah, what's not to like about silver? That, it, that it's been the worst performing asset in 10 years, the last 10 years. That's what's not to like. But that's also what it is to like about it because you say to yourself, Everything else went up, even if it's a bad asset, which it's not. It's a very valuable asset. It should be due to go up. But this idea that you, you listen to something over and over again and you convince yourself the rest of the world's got it wrong and for 10 years you've got it right and it's just a matter of time to silver is set to skyrocket, you could be disappointed. Treasury Secretary Geithner. Let's see. Relative rarity does not dictate value or price evaluation is off-road speculation. That's right. It could. It, it, see, if it was that simple, you got to remember, it's because gold is not silver and silver is not gold. A lot of times what they try to convince you is, oh, no, you see, silver is just cheap gold. No, it's not. It's not cheap gold. It has entirely different uses for the most part. The only thing that it has in common doesn't even have color in common. It doesn't have density in common. It conduct. They both conduct electricity, but they're used. the The profile of use is so different for gold and silver. Silver is like 65, 70 percent industrial. Then there's jewelry and silverware. There is no goldware that people make. Um, jewelry is very, very big for gold. Bigger than investment. Silver investment demand is 10, 15%. Gold investment demand is like 40, 45%. Central banks don't buy silver. Oh, but Russia, I saw it. Okay, 
as a reserve asset, Russia doesn't put down silver. Um, they put down gold, it's entirely different metal. It's not just cheap gold, and therefore, because it's 9 to 1, the price should be 9 to 1, and we're getting some kind of steal because it's 80 to 1. Well, I heard that when it was 50 to 1. <clears throat> I heard that when it was 60 to 1. Smoke and buy. Buy now. Sell all your gold. Buy silver at 60 to 1. Oh, it's 71, 81. They'll always be saying that. The silver to platinum rate, there's something to figure out coming to the ground in price. Yeah. All right. Pablo's got to go. He's going to take the dog for a walk. Everybody needs currency. You could always use more. Governments always need more. Currencies are always in demand, says AUAG. Yeah, the government actually creates its own demand. They may not have intrinsic value. It may not be right. It may not be moral. But they're the ones that kind of help assign the value. I thought you were going to say, <laughs> you have to ask yourself a question. Do you feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Go ahead. Make my day. The only commonality is they're in the same column in the periodic table. That's right. Now, what I think people need to do is you want to look at silver, you have to value it independently, not in relation to gold. There's not that much of a relationship to the two of them. The question is whether is silver undervalued based on its own supply-demand dynamic, whether silver is undervalued based on its historic performance. Um, I can't answer those questions. You have to do your own analysis. But when you... When you get pre-spoon-fed analysis and cherry-picked facts, data, sentences, and cliches coming from people who are going to sell you silver, well, then you have to ask yourself a question. Do you feel lucky? Well, do you punk? All right, enough of the Clint Eastwood, Scott. Um, thank you very much for joining me tonight. And remember, only by official small gold mugs. Hyperclassic mugs are a fad, and you can only get them in Australia, and it might even have, like, Rue bot saliva on it. All right, good night, everyone, and we will see you tomorrow evening, Sunday night. Thank you.